Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's wonderful to see you all. I know I, I tried my best to go around and, and say hi to everybody and see how your week's been. It ranged from being very busy to, oh, it was a pretty okay week last week. So a uh, real pleasure to be back here again. My name is David Faber. Um, just wonderful day today. I, I was talking with a, a couple of folks in the back, the Lloyd folks, um, and uh, uh, just saying yesterday, uh, about, I was out walking with my son, so I really enjoy walking around in the evenings and just enjoy the cooler weather once the sun went down. Had some neighbors just maybe four or five houses down, they have a hot tub and they were playing some music and having some fun, I could definitely tell. It was nice to pop in and say hi, gave them a little wave as they were sitting there <laughs> and then coming through and watching at that time of night, so many people out walking their dogs still, just a beautiful, beautiful evening last evening. So. Anyway, and it looks like a wonderful day today as well. And we'll get to in, enjoy and be part of. So I think we do have a couple of announcements. Actually, I just basically have one. Next Sunday, June 11th, uh, we're going to be honored with a guest, guest singer. Um, Margaret Benson from Spirit West United Church is coming to help lead our singing next week. And Tommy Jo Mortensen will be here as well to play. So we'll have a little bit more live music yeah. next week which will be really good to see um and uh i'd just like to say that um margaret uh, volunteered her services after our united church meeting last saturday at mcdougal united so uh, we got offers from of help from other united churches in the area uh just also today is trina is here and uh, if you need to place gift or gift card orders, she's here to do that, or you can also do it by email with her. Um, so welcome this morning. Thank you, Alice. Are there any other announcements? I'll just maybe mention uh, to what uh, Alice was saying with um, Margaret coming and singing with us. So she's from Spirit West United, and that's a congregation that occasionally I'll go in and I'll help lead worship with as well. And uh, just really looking forward to next Sunday too, because we're going to have some, as, as Margaret, as, uh, pardon me, Alice mentioned, we'll have that live music and live singing. We're going to try to kind of shape that all as a musical service. So really looking forward to it as well. That being said, we're here today. <laughs> so let's enjoy today. Our call to worship, together in unison. May the God who dwells beyond us, and the God who dwells among us, and the God who calls us to dwell together, bless us now as we gather in worship. In our first hymn, our introit, Voices United, 708, My Lord, What a Morning. Please rise as you're able.
keep going. <laughs> but it's, you know what? This is like the extended remix version. So we'll, we'll pause this. I'm, I'm very surprised. It's actually going for another two minutes. You may be seated. <laughs> I'm not going to stretch that two more minutes. <laughs> I don't mind one more verse. <laughs> it's always fun. He and I even coordinated last Sunday, said, okay, let's go through them and make sure. <laughs> it's always a surprise. But it is a wonderful morning. Let us continue together in our gathering prayer. Holy Trinity, forever one, whose nature is community, sun-bounded dance of love, in whom we love and grow and know our neighbor, life in all its fullness, making all things new. We praise and adore you. In Christ's holy name, we pray as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our scripture reading today. Oh, I mean, it's wonderful. Today's scripture reading taken from Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 to 2, verse 4a. Six days of creation and the Sabbath. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos. The darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yield in seed, and the fruits trees of each kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it, and it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it, and God saw it that was good. And there was evening, there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be light in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas, 
and let birds, let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the earth of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humans in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humans in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. On the sixth day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all of the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. May we find wisdom in today's readings, Thanks be to God. Thank you, Arlene. So our reflection and our words of yearning are connected with one another. Let us pray. God is the love that over and around us lies, the grace that flows to us all, and the healing that makes the earth whole. Give thanks to God. We are forgiven. Amen. One of the things that, as ministers or pastors, that you do is you, you go through before the Sunday service and you look through the different scriptures that are there. And in the United Church, there's something called the lectionary. A lot of different faiths follow that. And it's a series of scripture that's identified for each Sunday. And as I was going through and preparing for this Sunday's worship, I'm looking through and there's the scripture for Genesis. You know, right there. And it's, and it's a lengthy one. Thank you very much for going through and reading that and going through every day and what it means. There's all sorts of different ways to interpret that. I tend to look at it as a way of how life was together and our, our importance, our responsibility for that life all around us that we see, that was created and is here and is present, that we pay attention to it. We acknowledge it and are aware of what we do to it. As it said at the very end, so God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, so blessed it because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created so I tried to find something that connected with that a little bit deeper we've all kind of studied that certainly when you open up the Bible and start reading through I've personally I've read through the Bible four times now I know I should probably do it several more to go 
And I'm always fascinated as I go through the different things that kind of jump out and surface for me. And I always enjoy that start. You know, when you go through Hebrew scriptures and you're reading all the different scriptures and what's happening and you, you hit Moses and what's going on there and leaving Egypt and the challenges and the struggles that people have. And you can relate to it so quickly and so easily to what's going on today. And I think likewise in the scripture of Genesis, we can relate to that as well. The importance of all the plants and the fish and the birds and all living things around us. So I took a look. I was trying to find a poem. And I found one called The Beauty of God's Creation. I couldn't find the author for it, though. I went looking and looking, and I thought, this is a wonderful poem. I'll, I'll share it with you now. The beauty of God's creation so vast and so grand. A world full of wonder at our command. With breathtaking vistas and stunning sunsets. And magnificent creatures we'll never forget. From the smallest insect to the largest whale, God's creation is awe-inspiring without fail. With vibrant colors and intricate designs, a testament to God's majesty and power so divine. The mountains rise high, touching the sky. Their peaks so majestic, they make us sigh. The valleys so deep with waters that flow a place of peace where we can go. The ocean so vast, their depths unknown, filled with creatures that call it their home. The coral reefs and their colors so bright, a dazzling display of nature's might. The forest so green, with trees so tall, a canopy of life that stretches for all. A home to creatures big and small, a place of wonder where we can marvel. And then there's us the human race, a part of God's creation with a special place. With minds to wonder and hearts to love, we're a part of something bigger above. So let's cherish this beauty, this gift so rare. Let's protect and preserve it with all our care. Let's honor God's creation with every breath, for it's a reflection of love and depth. The beauty of God's creation so vast and so grand, a world full of wonder at our command. Let's appreciate its beauty and live in harmony, for it's a part of our existence and our destiny. So I found that as I was going through and I thought, you know, there's a great way of framing all the different pieces that come together, right? And, and here we are. I don't believe I've ever run into a person who's ever said, no, I don't care about the environment or I don't care about, you know, the living things that are there. I think deep down, we all do. I think part of the question becomes, are we focused on it? Are we paying attention to what's there? Speaking for myself, ooh, a little louder. <laughs> Move down, there we go, not bumping anything. <laughs> There's so many different things. Oh, I'm gonna move this, bear with me. See if that's that sounds a bit better, eh? Yeah, seeing heads nodding and not scratching so much. So there's so many different things to consider in that. One of the it brings back when I was thinking of the scripture that's there, and it talks about the beautiful skies. Who here has seen the northern lights? You know, when you think about that and that experience. I was at a spiritual gathering down in Salt Lake City, and it was from people all around the world and a lot of them from southern United States, and they hadn't seen the northern skies ever before. And I was sitting there, we were doing, there were some ceremonies that were taking place around a fire, and I was, just happened to be sitting down. This young couple comes up and sits down beside me and asks me, are you Canadian? I went, yes, eh? Whatever I, you know, the usual. I definitely could kind of pick up my accent. I used to travel quite a bit in North America for work, and I could pick up people's accents very quickly. And we have quite a strong Western accent. I know we don't realize it, but we really do, and people can pick that up. And I was sitting there, and they, were, they asked me, are you Canadian? I said, yeah. And they said, have you ever seen the Northern Lights? 
I said, well, yeah, I, I have. And they, they were just fascinated. They were talking about it and saying, well, I, I've never seen them. I've seen them in photographs. But tell me how they look. <laughs> I went, okay. <laughs> well, let's see, where do I start with this one? I took a little bit of time to think about it. Then I thought of where they were from. I asked them, so where are you from? And they were from Southern California, kind of the San Diego area. And I thought, okay, what's an analogy that I can use? And I thought of the ocean. And I thought of waves coming in. You know, and as those waves come in, they kind of crest and they roll as we get closer to the beach. And I said, imagine that, but in the sky, and just that motion, right? The motion of the waves as they're rolling and you're seeing this twisting and turning in the sky. And instead of white and blue, it's all different colors of green, yellow, all kind of forming together. And of course, as we say, dancing in the sky, moving in the sky. And they were fascinated by that. And I said to them, well, you don't have to go very far. You know, just, just go up north a little bit. And they said, yeah, but doesn't it get cold? Oh, well, yeah, of course. Come on up. And it was that realization for them of different things that happen in your life and, and what you get to experience and see and to be able to take in. There's so many different pieces that are there. It's part of the scripture. It talks about plants and the life that's there. In August, I'll be attending an environmental summit that's coming up again in, in the United States. And we're really honored and blessed to have spiritual leaders from the Amazon, first time ever actually in the world, coming together all in one place to meet with other indigenous leaders, spiritual leaders from around the world as well. To be able to share their story about what's going on, all the deforestation that's taking place. And as we've been planning all these different events, People have been sending emails and been reading through about what's taking place there. And you forget, right? You don't realize the significance and the importance of that. It's a quarter of the world's carbon sink, they call it. So all the trees, there's so many trees that absorbs the carbon dioxide in the air. Of course, the trees continue to grow and give life because of that. And yet they're being removed, and they're being removed for cattle farming. They're being removed for soya bean farming. And that's a struggle. Like you're feeding people. But there's also an impact to the world on both kind of sides, I think. Trying to realize what to do. And so they're coming together to talk about that and to be able to share their stories of what's taken place. There are many things and many experiences I'm sure we could all talk about, about how wonderful our earth is. I know here we are and we're, as we learn more and more about things, personally, I'm a documentary junkie. I'll acknowledge that. People in my life know that. I drive them a little crazy. I'll, what are you going to do, you know, today? Oh, I'm going to turn on a documentary on, pick something. And I'll just sit down and watch it and learn a little bit more. Try to understand what's happening and all sorts of different things, how people are living, their struggles. What are the different things we need to do here on this earth to look after it? So many different pieces that come together in that challenge that we have. When I read the scripture, and there's parts of it that say we're in command of all these living things, I gotta admit, I struggle with that a little bit. Are we really in command or are we there living with? being part of, supporting, paying attention. I mentioned that part of my time I grew up in Lloydminster. Well, if I back the story up a little bit, I grew up on a farm in Saskatchewan. We were grain farmers. So we grain, we would plant wheat and barley, canola, Sometimes peas, hated the peas. Harvesting peas is horrible. <laughs> Bad memories. <laughs> Lentils. And it's amazing at how well, and I always took it for granted, I never thought about it, of how you're connected to the earth. And the assumptions we would make, we'd be out farming and we'd think, okay, we've got to prepare for next year's harvest. What are we going to grow on that quarter section or you know, this area of the field? What are we going to grow? 
And we think back, okay, well, the last three cycles we've planted whatever, it's this time we need to let it go to summer follow to allow the nutrients to come back in. Or planting lentils or peas, that reinvigorates, brings in nitrogen into the soil naturally. Because you don't want to go out and spend all this money on fertilizer. It's incredibly expensive. I've made some mistakes with that before, by putting too much on. And it doesn't destroy the plants, but you're spending a lot of extra money that you don't need to be. I remember getting into a lot of trouble with that. One year we were planting canola. And canola is a type of plant, if you get to see it, as it matures, it turns to that brilliant yellow. You get outside of Edmonton, drive around, you see just fields of yellow. That's canola. But the seeds are so very small. They're tiny, tiny, tiny little seeds, and they're kind of purpley in color. And you don't need much to plant hundreds of acres. Literally, it could be fit in two five-gallon buckets, and you'd have enough seed to plant for acres and acres and acres. There was one time we were, we were out and we were planting, and I was loading up the cedar, loaded it all up, get everything, the tractor's hooked up, and I thought, okay, it's time to get going. I was running late on certain things, wasn't really paying attention, and off I went. I had forgotten to adjust the size of the feeder onto the ground. I had set it for wheat, which is much larger, <laughs> many orders of magnitude. And there it was. I go, and all of a sudden, there's binging and bonging in the tractor, and there's sounds going off. And I'm thinking, oh, no, what have I done? And I look over, and I realize, in literally 100 yards, I've dumped everything. $6,000 worth of seed. OK, great. Now I get to go back and try to explain to my stepdad, Hey, <laughs> I've just made a really big mistake. So, as I needed to learn, here's a bucket. Go pick it up. <laughs> Not so fun. I didn't take tweezers. Tried to scoop it up, tried to get as much dirt out as I could, put it in the bucket. But that taught me something about the earth. It taught me about keeping care of it and paying attention to what you're doing. We also had cattle and pigs and chickens to feed us. We were virtually self-sufficient. I don't remember going into town to shop for much of anything. It was like a really big deal when we did, because I'd go and buy a bunch of candy and whatever, stuff that you couldn't get. Pizza pops, those kind of things. So we would, we would uh, look after cattle and pigs and chickens and grow them from little chicks when you need to obviously butcher them. And, and you got to really appreciate that life. You know, the life you are nurturing and raising. And so I try with my kids to explain to them, you know, when you walk into the grocery store and there it is all laid out for you, how much work goes into that and how much people have to pay attention to be able to look after those animals. Certainly from a small farm operation anyways, paying attention. So when I read through this scripture of Genesis, that's what popped out at me. All these different pieces of our lives as individuals that we have looked after, our plants that are in our house, all the animals around us, paying attention to the trees that are here. I want to share one story about the importance of the trees and the plants in this area that you may not know about. So these teachings that I'm sharing with you were handed down to me by some elders west of Edmonton. We were doing some teachings and they were sharing some stories and they said, are you aware of how important the plants and herbs are around Hinton, the Hinton area, all in there? I said, no, I really hadn't thought about it much. They said to me, do you know there's as much biodiversity around Hinton as there is down in the Amazon forest? I'm like, what? <laughs> no, I did not realize that in that area. And apparently, as they described what was happening, when we were under glaciers, so 10, 15,000, just around some thousands of years in there, I think it's about 15,000 years ago, 
There was a couple kilometers of ice above where we are right now. We are at the bottom of an ocean. That's why there's so much oil and gas in Alberta. And as the glaciers were receding, imagine those, I can't even imagine, trillions and trillions and trillions of tons is scraping the earth, literally scraping all the plants and the vegetation that was there for them, clearing it right off as it's receding. But for whatever reason, as it was receding past, and that hinting towards that, can you kind of get towards Jasper, the Rocky Mountains, that kind of whole area? It didn't scrape the earth like it did everywhere else. So you have all of these plants that are there that are literally thousands and thousands of years old in comparison to what was, of course, wiped clean from the glaciers receding. So I was fascinated by that. And I said to them, like, how, like, how did you know this? And they went through and they cited scientific journals and the studies, and there's been a lot of study of the plants that are there. And again, it's paying attention to what's around us. You know, something I, I never even realized of the significance of some of the things in our area. And I'm sure if you were to look every part of the world, there's some story of the importance of that environment around. Genesis, that start. Well, six days, things being created. I think the intention when I read that scripture is the importance of lurk, looking after everything that's around us. And however we can do that as individuals. And to remind ourselves of that and not forget the importance of it, paying attention to it. I want to end with one last piece here. It's not only the plants and the animals, of course, it's the air we breathe and we've experienced that. I'm so grateful that the rains have come and, and in Halifax, all the fires have died down. It was mentioning this morning, it was reminding me of those images from Fort McMurray those years past. That importance of water. Water is our first medicine. Whenever you're feeling tired, you have a headache, what do we reach for? Water. That's part of, when we read again the scripture, and it says there is a dome that's there. You know, we're thinking of the sky and the water and everything in it. Without water, we don't have life. So as I look forward to this work of pulling together people from around the world, some spiritual leaders that will come together and talk about the environment, talk about peace, try to bring to light all the different things that are around us that we need to pay attention to. I hope to bring back more teachings and more understandings to share. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about it, it's called the Parliament of World Religions. It's a gathering of all faith, non-denominational, everyone coming together to be able to share, to be able to talk about what our struggles are around the world and what we need to be paying attention to. So, what does Genesis tell us? That's something for you to explore yourselves. Take a look at and dig into a little bit deeper. For me, what jumped out is that we are special. That what was created is good. That we are not to forget or to neglect it. And finally, that we are blessed to have what we have. And to remind ourselves of that every day. We are blessed to be here, to breathe clean air, 
to be part of this world and that we do need to support it and maintain it. In the name of the Lord, our God, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Loving God, we are so grateful for our world, for all things in it. We know that we need to nurture it and take care of it. We know deep down in our hearts we need to look after it and pay attention. We pray for our world the struggles of war, Ukraine and Russia. We pray for the families in India in that massive train accident that's taken place, 300 people dead, 900 injured. We pray for them and all their families at this time. Lord, we pray for members of our congregation that need to be lifted up in healing. Bob Kaminsky, Billy and Tilly Harrison, Jim and Jackie Miller, Bernie and Marie Thoreau, John McKinley, Eva Thomas, Christine Christensen, Charlotte Popowich, Rose Tremblay, and Irene Parker, and all others that we hold dear in our hearts. The Lord, we humbly pray for ourselves. You know our faults and our weaknesses, the challenges that we face. Allow us to open our hearts, to see what is around us, to touch what needs to be touched, to hold what needs to be held, to love what needs to be loved. And we pray in silence. We continue with hymn number 222, Come Let Us Sing. Please rise as you're able. Come let us sing Us 
to pray and walk with each other following your way. Our precious brothers and sisters will grow in the fulfilling love they know. There's earth shall bloom and mountains shall sing to the desire of all living things. Come all you creatures high and low, let your praises endlessly flow. You may be seated. So at this time of where all the good work that we've done in the past week, we provide back to the congregation in support of all the work that our ministry does for everyone. If you already donate through PAR or other methods, thank you so very much. For those watching online, there is a donate link that you're able to go through and click on. Of course, we have our offering plates in the back as well. As we come to present our offerings at this table, we remember God's generous hospitality. Our calling is to feed those dismissed from the world's tables, that they may no longer feel hungry or alone. And we pray together, saying, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled or afraid. The peace of Christ be with us all. Amen. We continue with Voices United 382, Breathe on me, breath of God. Please rise as you're able. Thank you. So thank you everyone for being with us today. I'm really humbled to be able to share the stories, to be able to learn and to listen from yourselves, to hear from you how all of this connects. May the grace of God deeper than our imagination, the strength of Christ stronger than our need, and the communion of the Holy Spirit richer than our togetherness. Guide and sustain us today and in all our tomorrows, in love and in light. Amen. And our final hymn is Voices United 291. Of course, we had to sing this one, right? <laughs> 
all things bright and beautiful. And I believe we go through every verse on this, right? Just so everyone knows. We'll hit this one on a high note. <laughs> all right, here we go. We did it! I know that was a lot to go through with each chorus, between each verse. But I must point out the words. God gave us eyes to see them and lips that we might tell. How great is God our maker who has made all things well. Have a wonderful week. Enjoy the world around us. God bless. Ha <laughs> ha.